Realm presents Echo Park, starring Harry Shum Jr. and Nikki Toison, Episode 1. James, Los Angeles, April 1st. I'm off the clock and I just taken a half a chunky rainbow when I got the call. Not that it's ever official. I'm not even a cop. But a man named Gilbert Aries barricaded himself inside his apartment with a gun and said he'd kill himself unless he got to talk to the street savior. Me. What the hell, James? Who called this shit in? Officer Kisa Lincoln tosses a bulletproof vest at me. She's my ride-along assignment this week. And also the worst possible person to be paired with when I'm this high. Mike Waddleford. You know him? Only by reputation. He doesn't like clones. I guess he likes suicides less. Shit. I put on my vest while walking toward the Ocean Grove apartments. Two men in earth-toned suits and dark neckties stand in front of the building. The drug fills my brain, dulling every movement, every sensation. Not a great headspace when things are this urgent. You good, James? Kisa and I have known each other since high school. With all the weird baggage that implies, she knows me better than anyone at work. Especially my vices. Yep. I take a deep breath and try to focus as we reach the detectives. Waterford and Wee Young. Introductions are quick. Which apartment? I ask. Waterford points. 2D. Lead the way. Kisa waves her hand. Hold on. James isn't police. You can't just make him take point. Ares asked for him by name. It's civil advisor Zhang's show. If he can handle it. It's Zhang. I'm a Los Angeles County civil advisor for public safety. I get a lot of flack for it. The public doesn't trust me. The officers don't either. And it's this day of all days that I'm supposed to take point. Show them what I'm capable of. <sighs> Breathe. The chunky rainbow is supposed to calm my nerves, dull my anxiety, lean into it. No, it's fine, officer. I tell myself to just act the part, play the role. I'll be able to do that. I point at the taller and darker of the two detectives. Both are already wearing display goggles with built-in duty cams. Okay, Detective Wu Young, you're with me. I'm still not clear on how this situation developed. Kisa says, but Wu Young tells her, We'll debrief you later. There's a man with a gun up there. Let's deal with that first. I give Kisa a look that projects seriousness, confidence, sobriety. Hopefully. Serve and protect, right? You're not a cop, Jimmy. And that's why he'll talk to me. Kisa makes a face. Fuck. Fine. Let's go. Wu Young points to the side of the building. What? You and Lincoln go around back, just in case. Don't want you catching any clone cooties. Fuck you, Dan. Waterford gives him the finger before walking away. Kisa shrugs and follows him. I lead Wu Young toward the front stairs. You got the internet locked down already? Jamming drones parked on rooftops circling the block. Kisa tells me. Program sync to utility cutoff. I'll trigger it as soon as you knock. We approach 2D, slowly. Wu Young draws his taser and gestures for me to pause. We both hold our breath, straining to hear anything inside the apartment. There's only silence. Wu Young holds up three fingers. Two. One. Mix Aries, I'm Civil Advisor James Zhang. I'm here to talk, as requested. I'm unarmed. Are you there? Gilbert? The door opens, and I stare straight into my own face. Oh, shit. I took way too much rainbow, didn't I? I'm hallucinating. But this can't be a hallucination. It's too detailed. He even has my chin dimple. Am I really looking at my own clone? Is that even possible? I mean, I know it's possible. The biotech company Arcogen successfully cloned a human almost four decades ago. Oh, I'm standing in the middle of a community displaced by the 40th Amendment. 
which gave clones their civil rights recognized by law. But why would my parents have cloned me? More importantly, why didn't they tell me? The man grabs my hand in a vigorous handshake. Wow, it's truly an honor to meet you, James. Shit, he even sounds like me. I stare at his mouth as he talks. Is it okay if I call you James? I'm Terence, Terence Libra. I'm your echo and you're my source, obviously. I yank my hand away and glare at Oh Young. What the hell is happening here? Surprise! Oh Young holsters his taser. I hear laughter and turn to see Waterford leading Kisa up the stairs. I got a visual of the video clip. Oh man, the look on your face, James. This is fucking priceless. Waterford bellows. Kisa steps around me to see Terrence. Sir, are you all right? Is there anyone else in the apartment with you? No, Gilbert's out of town. I'm just checking his mail and watering his plants. I guess one of the neighbors didn't recognize me when I came by the other day and called the cops. That's how the detectives here found me. I'm starting to get the picture. The LAPD likes to jerk around their civil advisor watchdogs every day of the year, but it reaches Olympic levels on April Fools. And how exactly did they convince you to go along with this prank? Terrence's eyes grow even wider. Prank? Oh, no. I mean, they said they could arrange for me to meet my source. I know not all Echoes think that's important, but I've been wondering about you for years. Do you maybe have time to talk? Behind me, Waterford replays the video again. I'm your Echo and you're my source, obviously. What the hell is happening here? <laughs> I exhale slowly, counting to five. Sure, but first I need a quick conference with my colleagues. Would you mind waiting inside? I've got plans to water anyway. See you soon. Terrence steps back into the apartment. By now, multiple neighbors have come out of their own homes to see what all the noise is about. At least Kisa looks nearly as confused as me. Not like the two assholes high-fiving each other. Hilarious, detectives. I'm sure the people of L.A. love you wasting their tax dollars on shit like this. Waddleford grins. Don't get your knickers in a twist, James. It's just a joke. In fact, you ought to thank us. Oh, young nods. Nobody got hurt, Zhang. And wasn't this a nice surprise in the end? Lovely. Thank you so much. I'm going to talk to my clone now. Kisa fires me a sympathetic look before she drags the two detectives back towards the stairs, assuring the other residents they pass that everything is fine. I take a deep breath. Forget about them. Focus on Terrence. My clone. No, my Echo. That's what they prefer to call themselves. I step into the apartment. It smells like something is baking. Terrence is nowhere in sight. It still doesn't feel possible. Sure, you see the odd gossip rag headline. My secret clone stole my identity. But in real life, people know when they have an echo running around. Terrence comes out of the kitchen wearing oven mitts and holding a tray of freshly baked cookies. Are you hungry? I thought you didn't live here. I don't. When I was here last time, I noticed Gilbert had left baking soda on the counter past the expiration date. Just to be safe, I got him a new box. But I didn't want to waste the old stuff. So you used it to make cookies? Just doing my best to help out. Help out. Standing there, staring at him, a new thought dawns. Maybe this is fate. Here's someone with the same DNA as me. Someone who could help me with a very particular problem. A problem related to the controlled substances currently burning through my bloodstream. I just have to convince my Echo to help his source. Los Angeles, August 17th. In the four months since we met, Terrence has proven more than just helpful. The man has never missed a scheduled drop. Until last night. I can't risk getting high without Terrence's DNA samples. We have a simple arrangement. 
regular supply of his clean urine and hair samples to pass my county-mandated random drug screenings. I pay handsomely for it with bundles of the small, unmarked bills Terrence prefers. But it's more than needing a fix. The radio silence is freaking me out. Normally, Terrence replies to any message I send within seconds, making me feel guilty for all the times I leave him unread for days. But he hasn't answered any of my texts in the last 24 hours. Where the hell is he? <sighs> Can't worry about this now. I'm on the clock. I need to focus. I'm paired with Detective Wu Young today and we're following up on a complaint. I compose the words carefully in my head before I say them. Hey, Wu Young, let me talk to this echo by myself. He's not going to be any trouble, but a cop might spook him. If he doesn't want police visits, he shouldn't be committing crimes. Also, Echo, you're not going native on us, are you? Detective Wu Young raises an eyebrow. The police car drives itself into the spot at the north end of the parking lot, near the sign welcoming visitors to Elysian Park. Listen, Dan. Oh, are we on first name basis now? What's on your mind, civil advisor Zhang? I grit my teeth. I work for the LA County, not the LAPD. I'm not required to submit to the detective's authority. My literal job description for the Lee Thomas Act is to monitor and evaluate law enforcement interactions with citizens and ensure that all constitutionally guaranteed protection obligations are met. I'm a watchdog holding the police accountable. It doesn't earn me any friends in the department. Given what's happened in their community recently, this echo might be reluctant to engage with the authorities. Wu Young rolls his eyes at that one. You're an authority, Jimmy. But I'm not a cop. This will only take a few minutes and it's hot as hell outside. No need for both of us to go trudging around in this heat. Wu Young takes a pull of his vape pen. Fine, have a nice walk. And you're not going to say anything about the smell when you get back. I hate the bubblegum flavor that Wu Young vapes, but it's a small price to pay to avoid being paired with Waddleford or another detective who goes out of the way to hassle clones. I grab the bag I'm here to deliver, put on my police issue display goggles, open the car door, and immediately start to sweat. LA summers get worse every year. Ignoring the craving, I'm really jonesing now. I check my phone again. Still, nothing from Terrence. I try not to imagine the worst. Terrence helping a fellow Echo and winding up on the wrong side of a violent anti-clone attack. Terrence injured in a hospital somewhere. Terrence missing like several other clones over the past few days. He's a good guy. He helps everyone, especially other Echoes. But if he got in over his head or worse, if I let him in over his head, deal with that later. After I'm off the clock, I can go looking. Our person of interest is sitting in front of a yellow tent under an aging eucalyptus tree. When the man looks up, my goggles run facial recognition. Two results. This is either Vernon Drake, local real estate agent, or Nathun Taurus, adult human clone of Vernon Drake. Given his current living conditions, I'm pretty confident I'm looking at Nathun Taurus, the clone, and the subject of LAPD's complaint. Hello? Nathun Taurus? Nathun scrambles to his feet and takes off into the trees. <sighs> Why do they always run? I sprint after Nathun. Almost immediately, I trip on the curb. God damn it. I right myself and run, dodging branches, leaping over the dry underbrush. In the heat, this whole damn park feels like a powdered keg waiting for a match. I hope Nathun doesn't have anything flammable on him. Where is he? I bring up the augmented reality overlay in my goggles and open a topographical map of the park. There, a bend in the old footpath just ahead. I slow my pace and approach a target from behind. Fortunately, he's not much of an athlete. Nathun's bent over, breathing hard. I, I, I just want to talk, I say stepping out from the underbrush. Nathun startles so hard he slips on a pile of leaves and crashes to the ground. Go away! I I'm not talking to any cops! I hold up my ID with both hands. Best way to minimize shaking from withdrawal. <sighs> Mixed Taurus? I I'm not police. My name is James Zhang. I'm a civil advisor. I work for the county. 
Not the police. Nathun staggers to his feet. So what? I'm not bothering anyone. My tent's five meters off the trail, and I don't have anything that could start a fire. No machinery, no animals. So, so why don't you hassle those idiots camping over by the stadium? As he speaks, he backs away. I follow. Your area is fine, Nathun. We need to talk about your- My what? Your shit, Nathun. Ser seriously? He asks. Some days my job is less than glamorous. I point at a nearby lamppost. There. Our safety cameras all along that trail. One of them recorded you, uh... Doing your business on the path. That's illegal. I can't even take a dump without Big Brother watching? That's fucked up, man! It's a public health hazard. Hey, 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 when you gotta go, you gotta go. You here to write me a ticket or something? How about a prescription? I hold up the bag. Nathun frowns. What? The sheriff's department took a stool sample to verify your identity. When county health services did the DNA testing, they found an infection. You've got a parasite, Nathun. But don't worry. I shake the bag. One course of this anti-parasitic and you should be fine. I'm not taking any government medicine. If you want to confirm the diagnosis, get your own script. You can take this to any free clinic in L.A. County. Where do you usually go for the stuff like this? Church, usually? He says. This is what I was hoping for. The reason I didn't want Wu Young here. I ask him. You mean the circle? Why do you care? I show him the back of the pharmacy bag. Here's a list of the clinics in Echo Park. And links to more information on health services. I hold out the bag and wait. After a moment, Nathun leans forward and snatches the bag out of my grip. Will folks at the circle know about this stuff? I'm sure they will. Very sorry to hear about his Kender Aquarius, by the way. Nathun stuffs the bag into his back pocket and scowls. Fuck you know about him. I know he was an important figure in your community. Clones have their own religion. It started at the retreat, where they were raised by the biotech company that created them. After Arcogen released them, the clones continued following that faith. But they don't discuss the circle with outsiders. Even Terence refuses to talk about it with me. Not that I've tried pressing him often. I don't want to risk pushing him away if I can help it. Why can't you let us have one thing? Sources get everything else in the world. Echoes just want our own space! I raise my hands, stepping back. Okay, I'm leaving. Just promise me you'll take those pills, okay, Nathun? They'll make you feel better. And if you ever need help, call the number for county services. I can take care of myself! I make my way back up the trail. Nathun glares at my backside until I disappear around a bend. As I climb back into the car, the scent of fake bubblegum nearly makes me gag. You get that shit sorted out? Detective Wu Young grins. I stole my goggles in the glove box. Wow, that joke never gets old. We're done. I'll file the report after you drop me off at home. Wu Young watches me enter my address into the car's navigation screen. You live in Monterey Park? It's my parents' house. You still live with your parents? <laughs> this I gotta see. Why, why, why did I admit that? I spend the rest of the drive talking Wu Young out of coming into the house. Not that he's serious. He just likes making people sweat. The car guides itself up the driveway of my family's estate. A massive neo-Victorian mansion. On second thought, Jimmy, maybe don't move out of your parents' house. <sighs> Trust me. Size isn't everything. Soon as I get that raise, I'm gone. See you tomorrow. Can't fucking wait. Wu Young is such a dick. He's still immensely proud of himself for figuring out how to override the department lockout on that feature. The noise brings my mother to the front door before I can properly prepare myself. She calls my Chinese name from the open doorway. Her pinch expression clashes with her breezy flower print dress. Hi, Mom. Sorry about the noise. LAPD doesn't update their vehicle software very often. My mother, Marie Zhang of... Yes, those Zhangs. Steps back to let me into the house, giving me a perfunctory hug. Your papa's still sleeping. You want Hadassah to make you a drink? No, sorry, I, I can't stay for dinner. 
I just need to change my clothes and pick up a couple of things. She raises her eyebrow. Where are you going? On a date? Just meeting a friend. Romantic friend? Mom, sorry. What's the word? Partner? Or are you in a truple? Polyamorous? Mom, no. It's okay, you can tell me. Dad and I don't judge. We just want you to be happy. I, I know. Thanks, Mom. It's not like that. It's just a friend who needs a little help. I head up the stairs to my bedroom. My mother follows. Are you volunteering? That's good for your resume. If you tell us where, we can donate. Mom. I stop at the door to my room. We've talked about this. It's my thing. I'd prefer to do it on my own. My thing, meaning I need to meet up with my clone for samples in order to keep doing drugs. A clone she would have known about. I'm not the only one keeping secrets in this house. A faint scowl returns to her face. We just want to help. Yes, I appreciate that. I'll let you know, all right? I'm doing fine, really. Some version of this conversation plays out at least once a day here. My father, Louis Zhang, still isn't happy I didn't follow in his footsteps to become a world-renowned surgeon. My mother would like me to use my law degree at a private practice instead of civil service. They both pressure me to change my career, but not, ironically, to move out. Not until I get married, anyway. Which makes my dating life another favorite topic. I'll get Hadassah to pack up some food for you. You're too thin. My mother turns on her heel to go find our live-in housekeeper. I shut the door to my room and drag a chair in front of it. I need to get out of the house before my mom tries to corner me again. I change into jeans, a faded La Brea Tar Pit souvenir t-shirt, and a black leather jacket that I... Uh, probably can't pull off, but continue attempting to anyway. I close the walk-in closet door, push a footstool in front of it, and make my way over to the cabinet behind my tie rack that contains my fireproof safe. Maybe it's all overkill. The old-fashioned combination keypad plus the standard fingerprint scan, retinal scan, and DNA sampler locks. But not everyone has a clone of themselves running around. I take two sealed packages and stash them in the lining of the jacket. A custom tailored modification. Then I lock the safe and hurry downstairs, shouting goodbye as I pass into the garage. But not fast enough. My mother catches me and shoves a whole department store shopping bag full of food onto the passenger seat. You need to eat something. Thank you, Mom. Goodbye. I call as the Audi rolls itself out of the garage. I open one of the plastic food containers and a sample of a couple of baozi. The Audi guides itself onto the freeway and I remove one of the sealed packages from inside my jacket. My hands tremble a little as I rip into the packaging. Finally, I tip out two chunky rainbow pills. Then I hesitate. If I don't find Terrence tonight... On the other hand, what am I going to do? Quitting cold turkey would be worse. And I made this work before Terrence. Disguise the highs, avoided using on days a test was possible. Besides, I'll find him. That's my job. I pop both pills at once. Perfect chaser for the steamed pork buns. I settle back in the seat. A familiar drifting sensation washes over me. But I can't stop the thoughts. What am I going to do if I can't find Terrence? Not to mention all the other clones who've gone missing. What are we up to? Three this week alone? He's not missing. He he's probably just busy. Forgot about the drop. Deep down, though, I know something's wrong. It's not like him to forget anything, much less an important meeting. Terrence has helped me a lot lately. Now he needs my help. All these people, whether they know it or not, just like Nathun Taurus, I can help them. I have to. There are no signs or notices on the dash when the Audi crosses from Los Angeles proper to Doubletown, but I sense a difference. The slowly increasing number of potholes the luxury apartments fading to crumbling storefronts and even shabbier residences. I remember how nervous I used to be about coming to Echo Park. I wasn't sure I'd be welcome, not since the clones made this section of Los Angeles their own. Everyone knows that the county supervisor chose Echo Park as a bad joke. This is where we had the low-income housing for clone setup. The land used to be abandoned, 
caught in an endless development quagmire. It was empty, run down, a name for what the clones like to call themselves. The Echoes. The Audi parks itself. I get out and walk to Terence's office, a small storefront attached to the east side of the circle. I've never been inside. No sources allowed. And he comes out to San Gabriel Valley for the drops. But I burn with curiosity every time Terence lets slip the slightest hint about what he does for a living. From what I've gathered, he sounds like a secretary or general errand guy. But how many errands does a church need run? I text him again, hoping, praying he's just been busy. Maybe he's working late these days and didn't see my texts. Hey! Hey, Terrence! Someone shouts. A petite woman with dark hair is walking toward me, staring at me. Oh, right. My mind races. As much as it can race while under the influence of Chunky Rainbow. Which isn't fast. What do I do? If I tell her the truth, that I'm his source, she might not even tell me if she does know where Terence is. As a general rule, Echoes don't trust sources. Terence is unique in that regard. I study the woman as she approaches. She doesn't look familiar. But then, I haven't met many of Terence's friends. She has curly hair, and her skin color and facial features indicate a mix of South Asian and Latin heritage. 5'4", medium build. Oh, I sound like a damn police report. Suddenly, I know exactly what to do. Haven't I seen cops do it countless times? Don't give away any information. Let the other person talk themselves into a corner. The most important thing right now is finding Terrence. You talking to me? I put on a non-committal smile and my best Terrence impression. Shit, man. Who else? The woman comes within arm's reach and holds up her right hand, fingers clenched. Okay, I know this one. Terrence taught me. I make a fist and bump it against hers. Been looking for you all weekend. Where you been? I shrug. Where do you think I was? She rolls her eyes. Don't give me that therapist double talk, man. People been worried after your skinny ass. Really? What people? She blows out a breath prickling my nose with the scent of alcohol and tobacco. Okay, Suave, you be like that. I'm not getting in the middle of this. I'll spread the word you're back. Just call them, okay? She starts walking away. Call who? The woman waves a hand over her head, not looking back. I stare after her as she disappears around the corner, singing loudly in a language I now recognize as Tagalog. Note to self, ask Terrence what the hell that was about later. I check my phone again. <laughs> Still nothing. I try the door to the storefront. Locked. Squinting. I peer through the windows. The inside hallway is dark, but I knock anyway just in case. Finally, I try calling him. <laughs> Straight to voicemail. Hi, this is Terrence Libra. Leave a message and I'll call you back. This is not good. His phone is dead, which means he could be... I force myself to breathe. Sometimes I get paranoid when I'm riding the rainbow. I need to take a beat. Back to the car. Yeah, car is safe. Plus, there's food. As soon as I climb back in the car, the fragrance of fresh chongyo bing makes my mouth water. I dig the scowling pancakes out of the shopping bag and munch on a wedge. Terence and I are not exactly friends, but I talk to him more than anyone I don't work with, my parents included. Hmm. Never thought about that until now. Or about the fact that I know next to nothing about Terence's personal life. Is that a bad sign? The only person I'm in regular contact with is my drug enabler, who I barely know. Oh, and he's also my clone. 
I take out another piece of scallion pancake. Fuck. Maybe my parents have a point. Then again, I haven't shared much of my own life with Terrence either. I jump, drop the food in my lap. A large man in a green tracksuit is hunched down next to the passenger side window. Terrence? Man, where the fuck have you been? Oh, here we go again. I plash on the non-committal smile. <laughs> nice to see you too. Before I can do a thing, the man reaches in the open window, yanks the door handle, and shoves the bag of food onto the floor. He pops into the passenger seat and locks the door. We need to talk. I stare at him for a beat. There's a half-eaten pancake on my lap. I pick it up and offer it. You hungry? The man glowers. I'm not in the mood for jokes tonight. Right, just talking then? I'm still smiling when he shifts his weight. I glance down. My whole body stiffens. I stop chewing and swallow hard, nearly choking. He's holding a handgun, aimed directly at my torso. Okay? Slowly, I raise my hands. Let's talk. You're listening to Echo Park, starring Harry Shum Jr. and Nikki Toison. Echo Park is a Realm production. Realm, your portal to another world. Listen away. Echo Park stars Harry Shum Jr. and Nikki Toison. Written by Curtis C. Chen, Monty Lin, Millie Ho, Sloane Leong, and Jen Reese. Produced by Rhoda Beyeza, Fred Greenhalge, Kaylin West, and Haley Wagreich. Directed by Pun Bandu. Executive produced by Molly Barton, Marcy Wiseman, Julian Yap, and Harry Shum Jr. Associate produced by Michael Coulter. Starring Harry Shum Jr. and Nikki Tauzon. Loop Group actors David Chen, James Taku Leung, Constance Pong, and Artemis Snow. Sound design by Krista Giametti. Mixing and mastering by Rory O'Shea. Audio editing by Jason DeWald. Original score by Martin D. Fowler. Music supervision by Marcus Begala. Production manager, Alexis Latshaw. Production coordinator, Angela Yi. Casting by Sunday Bowling and Meg Mormon. Cover art by Kendall Thomas and Louise Daisy. Executive in charge for Realm, Mary Asadolahi. Find more shows like Echo Park by following Realm on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or at realm.fm. Hold up. 